when it comes to service, most people have in mind a huge rack that you find in heaven with several components connected to it. But even of late, you have servers that are built on Raspberry Pi's desktop PCs and laptops as well. Well, in this video, we are going to be building our own server for the home. And this kind of server can be used for media sharing. We also have movie posting and then virtual machine provisioning as well. Hello friends, welcome to the channel and it's good to have you back. Well, with most servers that you have built, you usually connect them to a network so that it's um, accessible by any device that's connected to the network. In our case, we have a simple router that we used as the network for the home and then the server will be connected to that network. So currently, this router isn't connected uh, online or can't go onto the internet. So it's just going to be a local network where um, users that are on that network can access the server. Now let's talk about the PC that we are using for our home server. It's going to be a laptop. That's the Lenovo ThinkPad. Um, the specs is listed down here. And it was being used as a home PC. It had Windows 10 on it. The display had an issue and couldn't be used again. So I decided to connect it to a monitor so that we can see what is going on as we develop the home server. Let me quickly add that you don't need any extraordinary PC to be able to build your home server. The only requirement is that it should have an x64 architecture. So first things first, just like any other PCs that you have out there, um, an operating system is required for it to be able to run. In our case, we are going to be using Ubuntu server to run it. Some people like to use Proxmox. We also have other Linux. Um, based operating systems you can use. So once we know the operating system we are going to use, uh, we need to create a bootable device with it. And I'll be using Rufus for that. So with the app open, you need to select the device where the bootable will be created. You also have the partition scheme which you have to select. But if you don't know what to select, um, in a previous video we spoke in length about partition schemes. You can check it out to know what to do here. Then you need to change the file system to NTFS to save yourself any problems later. Once you are done with this, click on start. So fast forward to the completion of the bootable process. What we'll have to do is to shut down the PC if it's already on and then boot into the BIOS menu. Well, depending on the PC that you are using, the BIOS menu might be different. So you have to check online to know how to access it. Once you get into the BIOS menu, the first thing you need to do is to disable secure boot. That's if it's turned on. And also make sure that USB boot is enabled. So previously, I planned on doing the installation process through PC boot or booting over a network cable. I tried using iVentory, but I was not successful. So if you know anything about it and could help out, let me know in the comment section. Once you are done with this, you can save the changes and exit. Now, during reboot, certain pieces will automatically uh, boot into the uh, pen drive, that's if it's connected to the PC, but others wouldn't. So you might need to go to the boot menu to select the pen drive for it to boot from there. If everything went on as planned, you should see the grab menu with the first option allowing you to install the Ubuntu server on your home server. Doing a recording of a monitor is a bit tricky and challenging to do. So I decided to uh, do this process again on the virtual machine um, to give you a better view of whatever is going on. Once the installer is done, you need to select your language, then move to the next interface where you can update the installer if you like to before you continue. With the keyboard configuration, select the layout that matches your home service keyboard, and then you can move to the next place. With the installation type, let's go with the first option so that um, all the packages are installed. 
And then if you also like to install some third party drivers, you can select the last option as well. So we agreed that the home server was going to be on the network. Um, what we'll do is to manually assign an IP address that belongs to that network um, IP range. And that way, any device that wants to connect to it can always use that um, IP address instead of allowing the router to give it a dynamic IP address. Make sure you provide the subnet mask. In our case, it's 192.168.1. Dot zero slash twenty four, and then for the address is going to be dot two hundred. Now the gateway of the router is at dot one dot one. And don't worry, I'm not exposing myself by showing you these IP addresses. They are not uh, public IP addresses; they are private ones. Then you save the changes. But in this case, it's not going to connect immediately because we don't have the PC connected to the network yet. With the next interface, Ubuntu wants to check for some mirrors, but since we are not connected to the internet, it's going to fail. We can go to the next page. For storage configuration, you can decide to wipe the entire disk and then store the Ubuntu server there. But we'll go with the second option since there are certain partitions on a disk with important information there. Since we selected a second option, we need to specify a partition where the installation should take place. In our case, we'll do the installation on partition 5. We select that one, go to edit, change the formats to ext4, the mount points to forward slash. If you are going this route and you know you have um, important data in some of your partitions, make sure you select the right partition, otherwise your data will be wiped off. Now, after this interface, the installation starts automatically, just that you will be asked to enter your profile details. Let's install SSH during this process so that we are able to access the PC from any network using now a terminal. And we'll test the SSH out once the installation is done. If you are interested in installing any of these packages, you can select them and you are done. We wait for the installation to finish. The installation is done and let's reboot. During reboot, the grab menu appears again. And then uh, in our case, we have two operating systems. You have the Ubuntu and then the Windows. So we'll go with the first option and allow Ubuntu to finalize configuration. So it's during this process that our SSH is set up, and then we can now test it out. For us to test out the SSH, I've connected the home server to the network. And then I go over to my main PC, open PowerShell or command prompt then type in ssh with the username you created and then the ip address but if you didn't create a static ip address and you made it dynamic you have to find a way of accessing the router interface to know the ip address the home server is using at the moment you enter the password and now you have access to the home server in a subsequent video, we are going to set up a media server for media sharing on the network. I believe we are done setting up the web server. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Drop your comments in the comment section and share to others as well. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.